Welcome back to More Sip the Tally. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to tackle the number 27 team on the More Sip the Tally Power Rankings, and that is the second AFC West team, the Los Angeles Chargers. Last year they finished at 5 and 12. Um, coached by Brandon Staley, he got fired about 14 games in, and they finished 0 and 3 after Brandon Staley got fired, and now they're coached by Jim Harbaugh with a different outlook and they're hoping for a different um, plan. Got a bunch of Baltimore, former Baltimore Ravens on this team. Um, OC is from former Baltimore Ravens guy, a bunch of running backs from the Baltimore Ravens and a scattered former Baltimore Ravens players throughout the roster. And we'll talk about them as we go along, but let's start with the uh, quarterback room and let's get this, this uh, countdown started. For the Chargers, ranked number 27 in this year's 2024 more Sip the Tally Power Rankers. Their quarterback room, which is their best room. No, it's not the best room. I'm lying. Take that back. Their quarterback room is ranked number eight. Uh, mainly on the back of Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert played 13 games last year. 297 for 456, 3,134 yards, 20 TDs, seven interceptions. Uh, he's bagged up by Easton Stick. Um very limited stats. And then the third quarterback in that room came from uh, TCU is Max Dugan, who hadn't played at all, don't have any snaps. But their number eight ranking is pretty much on the back of Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is one of the premier QBs in the NFL. Hasn't won a lot of games when it counted. So he doesn't get that. Um, well, from my standpoint, he doesn't get that upper echelon ranking. He has the numbers, has a huge arm. Um he has everything but the wins, man. He just he he has won really a lot of games when it counted, or any games when it counted for that matter. But he has everything else that you need. He just don't have the wins, and when he get the wins, he'll probably ascend to the upper echelon of, of quarterback rankings because he he got the tools. He got the tools. But that quarterback room is ranked number eight on the back of Justin Herbert. Let's go to their running back room. Their running back room is headlined by two former Baltimore Ravens. I have their running back room ranked number 31. Let me talk about, well, let's tell you why they're ranked. Let's tell you who's in the room first, then I'll tell you why I got him ranked 31. Gus Edwards is first. Uh, former Raven last year, played in 17 games, ran for 810 yards, 4.1 yards per carry, 13 touchdowns, 12 catches, 180 yards. Another former Raven in that room, J.K. Dobbins. I only played in one game, got hurt again. Uh, eight carries, 22 yards, one catch for Two catches for 15 yards. He also had one touchdown. They got a rookie that I was really, really, really high on. Uh, Kamani Vidal from Troy. I really like uh, Vidal. And then Isaiah Spiller is the one holdover from the uh, Chargers last year. He uh, 37 carries for 96 yards and six catches for 34 yards. Now, why I have them ranked number 31? I don't know if the top two guys are going to hold up. They have injury history. And I know Gus played all 17 games last year, but he, he still has he has injury history. Um, I don't know if Gus, like being that featured, featured guy, I really think their rookie is probably going to lead them in Russia. Unless J.K., if J.K. stay healthy, J.K. will be, be that guy. But that's if J.K. stay healthy. J.K. has been in the league for four years, if I'm not mistaken. And I, and being a Ravens fan, I should know this. I don't know if he's been healthy an entire year yet. Maybe that rookie year. Maybe that rookie year. But after that, I don't. I don't think he's been healthy an entire year yet. So. That's why I have them ranked so low because I don't know. I don't think they're going to get through the year healthy. And I think their rookie is going to end up being the guy in that room from a health standpoint. Because they're going to run the ball a lot. Especially with Greg Roman as the offensive coordinator. And um, he's going to test. He's going to test them. <laughs> he's going to test them. Going to tell wide receiver room. I have their wide receiver room ranked 31st. Also, they lost a lot. Keenan Allen had a monster, monster year. Monster year. Probably had his best year. They didn't want to pay him. He was like, no, nah, I ain't taking no pay cut. 
Williams. Got rid of him. Got rid of him. The other big receiver, um, I think his last name was Williams maybe. Mike Williams, Big Mike. Got rid of him. Quinn Johnson is the holdover. Josh Palmer's a holdover. Let's talk about Josh Palmer for a minute. Ten games, 38 catches, 15.3 yards per catch, two touchdowns. Then Quinn Johnson, they drafted from TCU last year uh, with a first-round pick, 17 games, 38 catches, 11.3 yards per catch, two two touchdowns. Um, drafted Lad McConkey from Georgia. I think that's a great pickup for them because I don't know if Quentin Johnson has it in him to be the guy, but he'll be tested because, um, well, no, he, maybe he won't be tested because of what Greg Roman does. The, the role for Quentin Johnson may fit exactly what he needs just to be a, a down the field guy, uh, very few shots, a um, few little over, you know, over the middle type stuff. So this role that Quentin Johnson is in now in his Greg Roman system may fit him just right. The last system probably, was a little bit too much, but what Greg Roman's going to do with his receivers, it'll fit him just right, especially with Quinn being a bigger body person. He better work on his blocking. And Lad McConkie will come in and, and do everything else they need to do. Uh, DJ Chalk uh, played with the Panthers last year, 15 games, 35 catches, uh, five touchdowns. Darius Davis played with the Chargers last year, uh, 15 catches, 66 yards. Then he also drafted Brendan Rice, and I think he's going to feel that role kind of of what I just mentioned uh, Quentin Johnson is going to do. Um, and I think Brendan Rice is going to end up with a pretty good pro career. He has the, the size, the frame, the um, the mental fortitude to, to end up being a sleeper in this draft. And I don't know if his blossoming is going to come in a Chargers uniform, but I still think Rice is going to have a pretty good career. And once he gets out of this rookie deal, and he, if he goes to a team that's going to throw the ball, I think Brendan Rice will be a steal for somebody on that second contract. All right. Tight end room. 15. These are the guys that are going to eat on this team. Will Disley played with the Seahawks last year, 16 games, uh, 17 catches, 172 yards. That's going to double, if not triple. Hayden Hurst, who's been in this system before. He was drafted by Baltimore when they had Greg Roman. Uh, he played with the Panthers last year. He played nine games, 18 catches, uh, one touchdown. That's going to double or triple. And then Donald Parnum, 14 games, 27 catches, 285 yards, four TDs. And, you know, that's probably going to double. These three guys right here are going to have a field day in this system, blocking and catching the ball. Just trust me. Trust me. Going to the O-line. Uh, Rashawn Slater, Zion Johnson, Bradley Bozeman, who was at the Panthers last year, but also was a former Raven, played for Greg Roman, Jamar Salier, and uh, Joe Alt, who I think was built in a lab for this system. I think this system is perfectly built for Joe Alt, especially coming from what they did in Notre Dame, all the power and the counter that Greg Roman is going to throw. This is going to fit Joe Alt to a T. I think Joe Alt was drafted in the perfect system. But um, Rashawn Slater is their highest graded O-lineman returning. But you got three returning players, Two new players, uh, Bradley Bozeman, who's familiar with the system, so you can almost say he's a returning player. So you really got one new guy, and he was a high draft pick, and that's Joe Alt. I think up front, that would be pretty darn good. Going to the dark side, there are three or four defense in the base. So you got Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack outside, two really good um, edge rush stand-up guys. Uh, Bosa played nine games last year, uh, 20 tackles, six and a half sacks. But Khalil Mack was rejuvenated. Khalil Mack played in all 17 games. Uh, you know, normally those two guys are injury prone. Bosa didn't Bosa didn't get through all, all the games. He was injury prone again still, but Khalil Mack made it through. 17 tackles, 22 uh, quarterback hits, and he was a pro bowler. Khalil Mack rounded back into his, into what we expect out of Khalil Mack. Uh, but the interior guys on this list are not very good. Morgan Fox. Five and a half sacks. Uh, oh, oh, I, I can't pronounce that. Y'all see it up at the top. <laughs> 21 tackles, two QB hits. And then Puna Four, who played for the Bills last year, they played in eight games with nine tackles and um, one sack. Uh, Bud Dupree, the high-level backup, is probably going to back up uh, Joey Bosa. And, you know, in case Joey Bosa gets hurt again, Bud Dupree will probably fall into that role and, and – Work out with Khalil Mack. So that was a good job of them picking up somebody to um, 
bags up Joey Bosa when he gets hurt, not just in case he gets hurt, when he gets hurt again. And I don't know if I said it, but their defensive line age group is 21. All right. Linebacker room. <sighs> Got their linebacker room ranked last. Last. They lost their linebackers last year. They lost both of them. Now, they picked up Denzel Perriman from the Texans, who was the third linebacker in in Texas. I mean, in um, Houston. He was the number three linebacker in Houston. So, now you're taking the number three linebacker, making him the starting linebacker. Played in 12 games, uh, 76 tackles, uh, half a sack, three PDs. And the other starter is going to be a rookie from Michigan, Junior Coulson. Now, Junior Coulson was good. Now, I don't – I ain't saying it like he trash, but they're rookie. And I know I don't give rookies much credence in this countdown until they do something. And that's, that's not saying any of these rookies are bad. I'm just saying. Now, I'll give Junior his props. Him and Cedric Gray, they some dogs. But, again, starting out the gate with – a rookie and a guy that was a third third linebacker last year. Mm, come on now, come on. Now they'll probably get better as the season go on, and, and and it pains me to say that because I'm a fan of Miami and Perriman's a hurricane, but he's older in age. He was a third linebacker on the team last year, and he's gonna have to teach the rookie. So I think this is warranted for them to be at this point, you know, on paper, on paper, and all this is on paper, on paper. So they're, they're, they're the last linebacker room to me in the NFL right now. Cornerback room. I have them number 28. And the top three corners that I, I did in my research is uh, Sunday Samuel, Christian Fulton, and Jasir Taylor. So Sunday Samuel played in 17 games. He had 63 tackles. He had a 64.7 a reception rate, 11 PBUs, and four penalties. Christian Fulton, and Sunday is their best corner. Christian Fulton, uh, 11 games, 46 tackles, 72.5 reception rate. Uh, two PBUs and Jasir Taylor, uh, 16 games, 32 tackles, a 60.4% reception rate and uh, one PBU. So really, it's Asante Samuel and two, well, not two, but other guys in, in that group. Asante is the guy. Like, Asante is, he's good in zone. He's really good in man. Uh, as you can see from the, uh, the playoff game when they played the Jaguars, he got what? A couple of interceptions early in the game and, and pretty much handed the Chargers the lead, but they couldn't hold it. Asante is a guy. His dad was the guy, was a guy. He's a guy. So in that quarter in that cornerback room, it's Asante Samuel and others. Now, at the and others are the reason they're 28. Now, Asante is not, I don't think he's like top five corner. Maybe not even top 10. I'm just saying he's a good corner. But he couldn't elevate them higher than what they are. But he is a good corner and the rest of those guys are jags just guys so their room is ranked 28 and then their safety room which is the best group on the team i got their safety room ranked number two some people won't like that but i mean it is what it is i did a little research and my research has them ranked number two in the league as far as a group as far as a group derwin james 16 games 125 tackles Five TFLs, an interception, two sacks, a 70.2% reception rate, five PBUs, and eight penalties. Now, you see the eight penalties with Derrick James, and I give, I, I say penalties are bad for some guys, then I give some guys breaks on penalties. Derwin James is a guy that I give breaks on penalties because of his aggression. He, he is so aggressive that he tries to make plays and get the ball, and, and the things he does while being aggressive, he tend to get caught sometimes on penalties. He's a guy I give like a break. Like when I talked about Sneed a couple of days ago, Sneed got like 17 penalties. I gave him a break because he played so much man. And he had so much success while playing man. Derwin James is another one of those guys that those eight penalties don't, not going to really bother me. His running mate back there, Aloha Gilman, 14 games, 73 tackles, two TFLs, Three force fumbles, two INTs, 64.7% catch rate, seven PBUs, two penalties. Stat sheet stuffer, man. You got two guys back there that are stat sheet stuffers. They help you in the run. They help you in the pass game. They're smart. They're instinctive. And that's why I got them ranked number two in the um, NFL. This is the second best safety group, by my opinion, in the NFL. Let's take a look at the uh, rankings as a whole, and we'll list them all out. Starting with the quarterback room. The quarterback room is ranked number eight. The running back room is 31st. Wide receiver room, 31st. Tight end room is 15th. O-line room, 23. 
Defensive line edge, 21. Linebacker room, 32nd. Cornerback room, 28. Safety room, 2nd, which is the best on the team. You put those, add those all up, you know, divide them by, what's that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You get 21.22222, and that makes them the number 2017 on the more Sip the Tally Power Rankings. And let's take a look at their draft picks um, before we get up out of here. All right, Joe Alt, who we talked about for a minute, he's probably going to start at that right tackle spot from Notre Dame. Uh, Lad McConkie's going to be in the mix for a wide receiver uh, rotation. Junior Colson's going to start at linebacker. Uh, Justin Iagbe from Alabama is maybe in that mix at the D-line because I talked about how soft they were on the interior. You got your edge guys. Your edge guys are good. You got three good edge guys with um, Bosa, Mack, and Dupree. Uh, Cam Hart, tall, uh, Cornerback from Maryland. No, not from Maryland. He's from the Maryland area, but played at Notre Dame. Tall cornerback, so he may get a chance to, to get in that mix too because I said that you got um, Asante and just some other guys. Uh, Vidal, who I really like. I talked about him uh, earlier. Brandon Rice, I talked about him earlier. And you also got Cornelius Johnson, a fast receiver from Michigan. So he might get in the mix too because their wide receiver room is uh, kind of lacking too. So overall, it looked like a pretty good draft for them. And those guys all have a potential to get in and, and get some PT this year. So Los Angeles Chargers, number 27 on the more Sipton Tally Power Rankings. Uh, is it too high, too low? Who's going to be number 26? I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace and love.